Hey, good morning friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this does not work. Let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods this morning. And I want to thank everybody who's come out last night in our live stream. Our live stream was incredible last night. We had so many great fans and stuff that were in here. And I absolutely positively loved it. Now, one thing we got into a discussion about last night um, was Chris Richard. I absolutely love Chris Richard. Chris Richard, to me, my biggest worry is somebody is going to take him up. He could have been a head coach elsewhere this offseason, but I figured he kind of said, you know what? I'm good right here in Dallas right now. I'll stay here and I will work on my resume some more and really build a name. I mean, Lord knows I'm getting a lot of latitude on how to build this defense. They're letting me have more input than what I had in Seattle. And it's not a bad place to be. And that way, when I want to go ahead and pick that head coaching spot, I can pick a great situation. And we got into a kind of a heated discussion. It kind of miffed me off because I said, listen, if you're Chris Richard, yeah, you can be a head coach, but some of these jobs are dead end ones because of the organization. You look at a team like the New York Jets, okay, who hired Adam Gates um, from Miami who got run out of town and then immediately fired their GM and now the coach who you're not sure is a really good coach is now the GM and now you're searching for a GM. It's just not a good situation. You are set up for failure. And if you're a coach like Chris Richard, you get one shot and one opportunity to be a head coach. You want to make sure it's at some place good. Quite frankly, I wouldn't mind it being here in Dallas. But Chris Richard is getting this defense, and I believe this defense is going to be playing lights out. The thing you have to love, and I remember Stephen Jones saying this at the before draft press conference. He's talking about Will McClay working with the coaches and saying that it's going to change the type of players that we draft. And as you look at guys like Michael Jackson that are 6'4", or where we brought in free agents George Iloka, who's 6'4", that you're seeing these taller, bigger guys that are cornerbacks, much like the Brian Browners and things and the Richard Shermans in Seattle. And on our defensive line philosophy, We've always had these guys that are, you know, 6'4", 6'5", about 290 that are fast and strong. And if you look at how we get most of our sacks, it's not man-on-man -man where I'm going to bull rush you over. It's more stunts, twist, you know, um, X stunts and things like that, where you're getting a, the, the tackle going out and the end going in and confusing the offensive line. But as we learn from the Colts and from the Rand game, sometimes you need a guy who can get that push up the middle. And I want to go to Chris Richard's press conference here and listen. To yeah, that. I mean, it, they're uh, progressing positively. And um, obviously, again, we're just two days in, but they've really adapted to the technique, and that's all that we can ask for at this point. Again, they're buying in, giving us great effort, working the technique, and then eventually we'll be able to put it all together. Do you look at the guys you've had in the past, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, corner, Brandon Browner, and, and, and say you guys can be that, that's what we're looking for? Yeah, yeah, no, no question about it, especially, but the number one thing is, is athleticism. Mm -hmm. So these guys, yeah, they're long, they're tall, and they have great size, but they have the athleticism to go along with it. Chris Westry, a guy that you guys were able to bring in and then obviously sign after the draft, just how thrilled were you to be able to sign him, and what have you seen from him? Yeah, very thrilled, very thrilled. Um, Obviously, again, he's a, he's a ball of clay for us, and, and uh, but uh, it, it's just really cool to have a guy with that type of athletic ability, first and foremost. Um, again, beyond the profile fit, you're looking at a guy of this nature. Again, he's 6'4", 33-inch arms. He's really fast and got great athleticism. Um, obviously, again, the number one thing that we're looking for is, again, we'll get him to be able to play the technique, but it's the rest of the game that's going to come along with it. Um, again, the physicality, the aggressive nature. And, um, and really, we just want to be able to, for him to be able to fit the embodiment of what we ask for for all our DBs. Mike Jackson, you see big guy as well. Yeah, very pleased with him. Um, intelligent. Again, very, very smart, very sharp. Picks things up really quick. Um, get big, massive man. He's about 210 pounds. Um, get very fast. Has a nice athleticism. Um, I think he's got, a, he's got corner and a nickel combo ability for us and um, obviously the more you can do the more value that you'll present for yourself. In, in the draft night you know obviously there was a season between the corner and, and a defensive tackle and, uh, in the second round mm -hmm. there was a lot of I mean 
on the safety defense. Mm -hmm. A lot of safeties there. Uh, you cash your low for a defensive tackle. Why is that? It's this game is one up front. It's it's a big man's game, and um, obviously again when uh, when you're able to, to 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 get a player like the one that we got with Tristan, uh, he's. He's got like generational type athleticism, just freakish ability in regards to his athleticism. And uh, it's hard to pass on a guy of that nature. And, you, and, you can, and the safety, you feel you can do and, and get what you got out of the kid from Manuel? Yeah, we, well, we got guys that can play. And that's first and foremost. So you go into a situation like that, and we got guys that can play everywhere. Um, but it's hard to pass big for little, very difficult. I mean, you, you much prefer to have the bigger man than a smaller man because it's a big man's game. Um, needless to say, again, we, we got guys in the secondary that can play. It's, yeah, to me it's, it's, it's hard to pass big guys for small guys. And that's where we are with Tristan Hill. Now, I hate to kind of label guys or start putting out their comparisons to great players, but you think about the Tampa 2 defense. It started up front. The thing about having a great defensive lineman is a great defensive lineman makes everybody else better. If you've got a guy like Warren Sapp, and Warren Sapp was an absolute positive beast. He had 107 sacks. And the push, the athleticism that he displayed, getting after the quarterbacks. I want to just kind of show you some clips here of Warren Sapp and what this guy actually did. This guy was a freak of nature. To have a guy that's a fat guy, as John Madden would say, but to be able to move the way he moved and being relentless was unbelievable. Warren Sapp had a motor that never quit. And if we get a guy like that that gets that big push, a guy like that is able to occupy space. When you looked at how the Rams ran rough shot over us, he's going to be able to get that push and force the running backs to change direction and make a move before they get up to speed. It's, it's insurmountable. When you get a guy who can get that kind of push up the middle, quarterbacks cannot stand having somebody in their face or at their feet. More times than not, they're going to get rid of the ball quicker than they want to or they're going to try and run. But if you get that push and you have a Demarcus Lawrence and a Robert Quinn on the outside, it's going to be a meeting at the quarterback. It's going to be a sack fest. Quarterbacks will not be able to step up. And if this guy occupies two offensive linemen requiring double teams, that's one person less to get to the second level. If this guy ends up being able to get that push in the middle where he's immediately in the quarterback space, that means the cornerbacks and the safeties don't have to hold up for more than two, two and a half seconds, as opposed to seeing Aaron frickin' Rodgers run around for seven. So when you look at that guy, you see what he is able to do. You can understand what Chris Richard is looking. He made the decision that, listen, I'm better off getting this guy that's immediately going to put pressure on the quarterback than getting a guy who has to wait for everything else to develop where we're going to spend more time. Yes, the safety is key, but that defensive line, whoo, Nelly, that defensive line is where it really counts. Now, after seeing some of Warren Sapp, let's take a look at Tristan Hill here. Tristan Hill, as he put it, generational. Do you see any similarities here? Now, I'm not saying he's Warren Sapp just yet, but you can see him standing up the offensive lineman, driving and finding the ball carrier. Look at that. Boom. And taking him down. This guy is a freak of nature, and he plays relentless with that hair on fire, much like Warren Sapp. And that is the player that we have been missing on this defense. And i got to tell you, I love it. I absolutely am excited because this is the first time since basically the 90s that you've got a defensive line that you look and say, these guys are hungry, they're young, they're strong, and they're relentless. And we're going to get sacks. We will be one of the top sacking teams, I think, in the NFL this year. And it's going to be a tough defense to play against. So Chris Richard, he's truly in the fold. He is part of the decision-making. And you look at... Some of the things that happened. 
with him being part of the war room during the draft and being part of the decision making of saying, you know what, we've got the safety Thornhill over here, but you know what, I want that guy. I want that guy on my defense and the Dallas Cowboys listening. And you see how big a part he is of this defense. But like I said, my biggest worry is we end up letting him get away. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. Uh, one other thing, too. Miss Jackie's been tweeting, uh, she's not tweeting, send me some messages and stuff. And here's one of these <laughs> great tweets that are out there from Cowboys Nation. Miss Jackie sent for me, so thank you, Miss Jackie. Guy spends his entire life getting ready for the NFL. Um, plays for three years, helps to carry the team through the transition from Romo, and when it's and he can finally get paid, people are arguing that he shouldn't get paid starting quarterback money. Laugh out loud, laugh out loud. Some of y'all are just crazy right on through. And it's true because this whole thing of, oh, don't pay him, don't pay him, I'm just still kind of mystified by that whole thing. I, but, but you know what? I, I, I won't talk about Dak because some people get offended because they say I talk about Dak Prescott too much. But then again, when did I ever worry about being offended? I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, i got to get to my day job. I'll talk to you guys soon.